Let me first ask you about these uh, steel tariffs. We heard from Theresa May that this exemption, she's working to um, make it permanent. Uh, I think Peter Altmaier said something similar mm -hmm. on, on the radio this morning. Uh, wh what are the chances on that, and what can you do to make these exemptions permanent? We don't want to have a race to the top uh, concerning um, extra tariffs. This uh, might harm our economies uh, on both sides of the Atlantic. Uh, uh, this is only a lose-lose uh, competition and not, not that what we want to have. And Peter Altmaier and also uh, Cecilia Malmström from the European Commission uh, went to, to Washington and uh, I think they reached a real good uh, result. The first is that they reached a uh, time to talk with um, uh, U.S. Uh, uh, trade officials on uh, what, what can we do to, to hinder uh, such uh, extra tariffs for, for steel and aluminium from Europe. Um, this, this is now uh, postponed up to the 1st of May, um, I think. Uh, the second is that we reached a, a new dialogue on uh, trade questions. Uh, there will be an agenda from um, U.S. with uh, critical points on the agenda where U.S. wants to talk on, and there will be also such a, a list of topics from the European Union side. And at the end of uh, uh, the day, we will see that probably we come to the result that we should have uh, more intense negotiations on what is in and trade. And then we are back to that what we um, uh, had with Obama uh, uh, some years ago. I wonder what you can do. Um, Peter Olmeyer is the economy minister. Um, mm -hmm. He said this morning that he's convinced there are no unfair tariffs on steel, uh, on aluminum, and on autos from the EU mm -hmm. side. But EU tariffs on, uh, on U.S. autos are 10%, whereas U.S. tariffs on EU autos are only 2.5%. Why this uh, substantial imbalance? Yes. The tariff structure between uh, U.S. and European Union was negotiated several years ago. And uh, if you look to the full picture, to the um, um, whole ter uh, tariffs we have on both sides, you see that the uh, average is uh, nearly the same. Uh, there's only a very slight uh, difference between tariffs from U.S. towards European Union and the other way around. Therefore, picking out some uh, uh, single um, aspects it's not helpful. You have to have the full picture, and probably in automobiles it's as it is, but in several other parts it's uh, the, the other way around. And therefore, uh, our, our um, goal in the negotiations on TTIP was to, to ban all uh, tariffs. And I think at the end of the day, this should be our target to, to, to um, 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 take away all um, 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 things that hinder us to have uh, good trade with us. Guy? Jürgen Hart, good morning. Guy Johnson in London. Um, is Germany going to have to pick sides if this trade war escalates? Um, in the past, the biggest trading was with the United States, but in the future it might be with China. If it had to pick sides, which way would Germany go? One of our proposals to the U.S. side is that we should go um, um, into uh, talks uh, how we can face probably unfair trade practices from China or other um, uh, together, because if you look to our economies, uh, U.S. economy plus uh, European Union economy uh, is a double, uh, and therefore also our leverage is double. Uh, therefore, uh, I think one uh, part of the talks to U.S. Should, uh, should be what can we do to promote fair trade in the regulation of WTO. I think we should stay clear to uh, the commitment on WTO, but, but probably what can we do together. And this might be the best, uh, best approach to reach a better situation. Situation. And I think yeah. also China is very much interested in free trade because they are exporters and strong exporters also um, in favor of uh, having um, easy trade uh, relations and no trade wars. But Jürgen Hartz, the United States doesn't want to use the WTO. The United States wants to go down bilateral relations, the route, uh, rather than the, uh, the multilateral story. It's China that is talking about WTO options. Uh, therefore, do you not therefore feel it would be easier to talk to China rather than the United States? It's a pity that the uh, United States, uh, who was one of the uh, strongest promoters of every multilateral structures, not only in trade but also in, in, in other fields of security and um, 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 uh, other parts of policy, is now stepping a little behind that. Uh, I understand that U.S. President says in bilateral relations, uh, U.S. is always the strongest, and therefore we are in a, a, a U.S. in a maybe better position um, uh, if we do it bilateral and not multilateral. 
But um, looking to the global situation we have, not only in trade, uh, but uh, especially also in trade, I think there's no, no chance to reach something on a bilateral level. There's only the chance to get a more fair and free trade worldwide uh, by um, integrating um, as much as possible. And um, when my, my talks to the, to the Hill, to senators and congressmen in the last uh, weeks uh, say that there's a strong promote, uh, a strong support for, for such an approach that is not only bilateral but uh, multilateral. You were just in uh, the U.S. That's your brief, the transatlantic relationship. When you go there, what do you say about the trade surplus? I've got this chart on the Bloomberg that shows numbers you're, I'm sure, very familiar with. Uh, right now, it's a 66 a billion euro trade surplus. These numbers are from 2016, but it remains that high or even higher um, now. How do you how do you try and explain that away, uh, so to speak? For me, it's first uh, um, a sign for the fact that U.S. citizens are richer, um, have more welfare than others. They uh, are able uh, to buy and use goods that are produced all over the world, and they are not obliged to pr produce as much themselves as they uh, are, are able and willing to use. Uh, it's uh, the free, um, uh, sovereign decision of every customer in the U.S. Uh, to buy a BMW or Mercedes and not a, a Chevrolet or, or Cadillac. Um, uh, the price, Germany is not a, 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 in a price competition with its products in the U.S. If you look to the, to the pr price of German products in the U.S., you normally see them on the, at the end of the price range, on the top of the price range. Uh, therefore, I think uh, the challenge should be another. And my, my advice or what my comment to that, what I also say to senators and congressmen is, if you always think that every bad thing is coming from outside to U.S., maybe you uh, take away the spotlight from the fact that probably some things in U.S. have to change. Uh, investment in modern industry, um, education of employees, uh, um, infrastructure investment. Uh, and I think U.S. Uh, people should, should, should see that they, they can do a lot uh, at home to, to balance uh, this uh, um, uh, trade deficit. Um, and otherwise, uh, with tariffs or so, um, only US, uh, U.S. citizens have only to pay more for goods, and I think they, they need are not to build better to do cars. That. They ha have to build better cars, and in case that there are extra tariffs on on, on the better cars from outside, okay. in the from the point right. of view of the customer, uh, then they will be angry about the president and not happy about the president.